Hello students, today's lesson is over simplifying radicals with an index that is greater than 2. So when we're talking about an index, we're talking about this number that's um, above the little square root sign, or the radical, I guess I should say, because it's not a square root. And what I want you to realize is that when there's no number there, then that is a square root, okay? But when there is an index there that's... Um, then it'll tell you what kind of radical it is. So because there's a 3 here, we get, we're going to call that um, the cube root. And then if there was a 4 there, we would say the 4th root, 5, 5th root, and then so on. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to break these down just like you did when we were simplifying square roots. But this time, um, because it's a cube root, I'm going to be looking for three of the same number, as opposed to when we did square root, we were looking for two of the same number. So break down the eight as far as it'll go. So that would be two times four, and then simplify the four, two times two, bring down that two. So if you see here, we have a, a three, we have three twos. So when I take the cube root of eight, that means that the cube root of eight is just two. Okay, so let's look at the next one. The next one is negative cube root of 54. So we're still going to break down 54, so that would be 9 times 6, and then break that down. 9 breaks down into 3 times 3. 6 breaks down to be 2 times 3. Okay, because it is a cube root, then we're looking for a group of 3. So we have 3 3s. So that's going to come to the outside. Now look, I already have a negative out there, so I'm going to keep my negative out there. When I pull out my 3, it's just going to be with the negative, so it's negative 3. And then I have cube root of 2, because the 2 is left over inside. Make sure that when you write that, you need to write cube root and not square root, like we've been doing in the past. For example, 3, we have the fourth root of x to the fifth. Just because it's a variable, still go ahead and break it down. So x to the fifth breaks down as x, 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 so it's x times x. Okay, and then the fourth root, so that means I'm looking for a group of four of the same. And so that's going to come out as an x and then I've got the fourth root of the other x, okay? And that is your final answer. Okay, let's look at the next one. Plus or minus the fourth root of 48. So let's go ahead and start breaking down the 48. Um, 48 could be 4 times 12. 4 breaks down 2 times 2. 12, 4 times 3. Bring down your 2, bring down your other 2, break down the 4, 2 and 2, and then bring down the 3. So because it's the 4th root, I look, I'm look. i looking for a, or a group of 4 of the same. So I have that, so that's going to come out, so I'm going to have plus or minus. This is going to come out as 2, and then I have the 4th root of 3. There's your answer. Okay, let's go on to the next one. 486, fifth root of 486, x to the sixth, y to the fifth. So let's break down the 486. So I know it'll be 2 times 243. Break down the 243. That's 3 times 81. 81 breaks down to be 9 times 9. And then 9 breaks down 3 times 3. It's supposed to be a 9. Break it down again, 3 times 3. Okay, we're looking for a group of 5. Now let's go ahead and break down our x's and our y's too. So we have x, 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 x. And we also have y, 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 y. And you'll start to see a little pattern here, so you won't have to write down all your variables anymore, but... Um, <clears throat> If, if you need help, you can always do that. So fifth root, so I'm looking for a pair of five numbers, or sorry, a group of five numbers. So my threes, there's four here and then one up here, so that would be five. And then I'm going to take five of my x's, 
group them together. And then five y's, group those together. So everything that's a group comes to the outside. So plus or minus three x y. And then I have the fifth root of what's left over, two and the x. And there's your answer. Okay, number six. I want you to do this on your own, and um, and then when you're ready to check your answer, uh, play the video again. Okay, check your answer. You should have gotten 2ab cube root 9b. So just remember, anytime you have something left over, so the 3 and the 3, you're going to multiply those back together. Okay, so number 7, go ahead and break down the 64, which would be 8 times 8. 8 breaks down, you should know by now, it's 2 times 2 times 2, and then 2 times 2 times 2, and then x to the 11th. What I'm going to do here is I want you to notice that when we're taking the 6th root of x to the 11th, instead of me having to write out x 11 times, if you take out 6 of them, that's going to leave you with 5 left over. And then, so I'm just going to put an x out here because I went ahead and took that out. All right, so now let's look at our twos. We have six twos, so that's going to come out as a two also. All right, so let's see what we have left over. On the outside, we have two times negative two, which is negative four x. Don't forget we have that x there. And then, so I'd have the sixth root of, the only thing left over would be x to the fifth. Okay, and there's your answer. All right, looking at the next one, this should be a review from the last unit. When you take the square root of something squared, that just cancels, and so you're just left with x minus 3, okay? And that would be your answer. Now, I put that in there to help us with this next problem. This next problem, number 9, we have the cubed root of 3x plus 7 to the 10th power. So what I want, I want to use what we did here. So I'm going to star that. What we did here was we had the square root of something squared cancels. So if I can break up this to the 10th power with cubes, then I'd be able to cancel out the cubes. So what I want you to think about is, okay, so if I take 3x plus 7, whoops, plus 7, and that's to the cubed power, how many of those would I have to have to make it to the 10th power? Well, that would be 3, and then if I had another three of them, so to the cubed power, that would give me six power to the sixth, so I'd need another one, that would give me the power of nine, and then one more, three x plus seven, would give me to the tenth power. So what I want you to notice is that the cubed root of this, this, and this, we'd be able to take that out, so on the outside, because there were three groups of 3, then I would have 3x plus 7 on the outside to the third power because there were three of them that I took out. And then I have the cubed root of 3x plus 7 left over. Okay? And that is your final answer. All right, so come to class with this filled out um, notes, and I will check them tomorrow.